Hi everyone, my name is Jason. And I'm Lorraine. And this is So The Land YouTube channel. And something new, something different that we have never done on our channel is do a homestead tour. We never done a homestead tour here on our one and a half acre homestead here in Western North Carolina. So let's go do that today. Uh, but first, we're gonna show you our house. All right, so this is our home. Uh, we live in a single wide mobile home. Pretty much everything that you see in this home, we built. It had carpet, we ripped up the carpet, painted walls, uh, tore out the kitchen, we put brand new fixtures, uh, tore out the bathrooms, and just made the mobile home into our home. When we first moved in, Jason gutted the kitchen and he had asked me, what do you, what do you want the kitchen to look like? What is your style? And I had seen something online that looked very close to this and I said, this is what I want. Very raw, very primitive, very minimal. This is what he built and I absolutely love it. I had even <laughs> joked with him once before saying, if we ever move, could we just take my, my kitchen? I just love it. Everything is open and we can, I can see what we have and it just makes us accountable for what we have and living minimally. We can't just stuff everything in the cupboard and close the door and hide it behind there. Everything that we have out here is what we use. And then this last winter, I put in this wood stove, which has been really beneficial for us. And last year, it heated up our entire house. So we did not have to turn on our heater one time. Now, I don't think we shared this too much uh, with you guys, but when we bought this place, Lorraine had never seen it in real life. <laughs> I had never seen it in person. Jason came out here to look for property for us and I was still at home in California and he would send me pictures of properties that he was looking at and this was one of them. And in my head, I was like, not that one. That one's got a mobile home. It can't be that one. And when he came back home, he was like, I think it's gonna be the one with the mobile home. <laughs> and I was like, no. But it ended up working out for the best. We're here in our garden and this garden we started right when we moved here about three and a half years ago. It is about 2,000 square feet. We do a no-till garden and it's been growing and growing and getting better and better every year. This year, we wanted to grow vertically and increase our growing space. And because this is a no-till garden, we have about 13 hilled rows where we can grow our food. When we moved here about three and a half years ago, this space right here was just knee high, filled with grass and weeds, and the soil was very clay-like. In this garden space, we grow most of our food. We also can and preserve and freeze a lot of what we grow here. And this is Bernice. <laughs> she was part of our one of our first chickens that we've got here on our homestead. This is where we keep all of our chickens, and we just got new ducks. Uh, we have six egg layers, and we also have three ducks. And those are pecking ducks. The chickens have been giving us about four eggs a day, and the ducks, they've been giving us about two eggs a day. Uh, we use this chicken tractor. This is a John Siskovich style chicken tractor that um, typically we would use this style of chicken tractor for our meat birds, uh, but I converted this one for our egg layers. This chicken tractor has wheels. Um, it's really light, and it's a smaller version than the original chicken tractor. And we have, I put in nesting boxes, uh, basically out of a Home Depot bucket. <laughs> uh, and we use this chicken tractor year round in the snow, uh, in the winter, in the summer. And we are always moving it around our property, which I feel is the most important thing for our chickens is constantly moving their chicken tractor so they could be fertilizing the soil for us. All right, so when we first moved on this property, there was nothing here. The only thing here was the house. And so I felt like it was always important for us to, uh, we needed some kind of garden shed, like something for our tools, for our garden. And so I made this lean-to three-walled shed uh, for us last year. And this is just very simple construction. Uh, first time building any structure like this. Uh, and this is where we house all our tools. We have these barrels full of our chicken feed. This is, our, this is the feed we mainly use for all of our meat birds. Those are our tools over there. Penelope has her bikes in here. 
the most important thing to have an efficient homestead is make sure everything has a home. And so this is our home for our feed and for all our garden tools. Being here in Western North Carolina, we are really spoiled with water. <laughs> There's so much water here, but it's still important, I think, for us to save water. And so we're also using this roof uh, to save some water in these barrels, uh, which I installed a spout. And it's not so much about saving water. Yes, that's important, uh, but being here in these mountains, we don't necessarily need to save water. Uh, but we use this to fill up uh, buckets. Uh, instead of using a hose, instead of using our creek, you know, we're filling them up. It's like just really convenient to have this here and we could use this to fill up our chicken's water. And it's more of convenience and being efficient for us on our homestead. And this is our greenhouse. And this is a greenhouse I built. Again, this is very simple construction. I feel like a lot of anybody, I feel like anybody could do this. <laughs> you know, I've never done any building like this before prior to moving to North Carolina. So if I could do it, you could do it. <laughs> but this is about a 150 square foot greenhouse made out of just two by fours and uh, just PVC pipe. When it gets too hot in here, we roll up the sides to let some more airflow inside this greenhouse. So we start our seeds in our greenhouse. Uh, we also grow tomatoes in here, and we also just grow food in the ground, which currently we have onions and some Swiss chard growing right now. They're just starting to ripen the tomatoes here at our place. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I made this greenhouse with two doors. That's really just to get more airflow inside this greenhouse because it gets hot here. And I think it also makes it more efficient when there's two doors. So we have both doors to come in and out of. One of my favorite builds on this homestead that Jason built for us is this water, rainwater harvesting barrel system. And he built it right off of this greenhouse. So it would be close to our plants that we water and all of the chickens that we need to give water to. We can even use this to rinse our hands off. So this is great, a great tool to have on the homestead. Saves a lot of energy. Another really cool thing on our homestead was this veggie washing station that Jason built. And we can take our harvest and wash it right here and get all of the dirt off before we bring it into the house. And now we're at Penelope's Mud Kitchen. And this mud kitchen is actually a, a playhouse. Oh, well, mud kitchen. And actually, it also doubles as a chicken brooder. When we get baby chicks, we'll put them in here with a heat lamp. <laughs> so that way they'll stay warm. Because really, we have nowhere else to put them. <laughs> and now we're just going to talk about the creek. And something we did not expect when we moved on our property is all the wild blackberries that are here. And then one of the most important resources that we have here on our homestead is this creek. Penelope uses it for her mud kitchen. Right, Penelope? Yeah, to um, wash the dishes. <laughs> we have some mushroom logs over there that we're using some of the water to water those logs. And it doesn't really get much higher than this. I'm still trying to figure out ways how to utilize this stream. Uh, maybe using some kind of ram pump to pump the water out and water our garden. But we also come out here uh, when it's really hot out. We come out here barefoot and we just kind of hang out in the creek, which is super cold and, and really nice in the summer. And being in Western North Carolina, it does feel like sometimes that we're in the Amazon forest here. <laughs> Everything is super green and everything grows like crazy here. 
uh, bugs bugs are in your face but it is, it is extremely beautiful at the same time another cool thing that we do here on our homestead is we try to cook outside as much as we can and hang out outside as a family and so we have this fire pit that we set up uh, it has like a teepee style grill that we made and this is kind of where you know I have a lot of scrap wood we just bring it here and we just like to hang out by the fire every homestead has a chicken coop that just sits there and is not being used and this is our chicken coop <laughs> This is the first chicken coop that we made when we moved here. And I meant for this to be movable. I, I knew from day one that we needed movable coops. And so I meant for that to be movable and it really was not movable. It was very difficult, very heavy. Uh, so it sits here until we can find some use for it. I mean, it's still good. We could still put maybe some chickens in here, but we don't use it right now. I imagine one of these days we will use it. But this other chicken coop, this is a, a main one that we use, which uh, we use for our meat birds. We have three of these, one for our egg layers and two for our meat birds. This one is movable. We just butchered 30 meat birds uh, last week. And so this is now resting until we get more meat birds. But let's show you the meat birds that we currently have right now. Okay, so this part of our homestead is our pasture area. This is the area that we raise all of our meat birds. And this area just gets really better as we're doing it. You know, it gets better and better every single year because we use the meat birds in this area. We are, they're constantly moving up and down, eating the grass and fertilizing this soil. And so the grass here is a lot thicker and a lot greener than the rest of the property. If you look closely at the ground, like there's so much variety here as far as what the chickens have to eat. There's squash growing. We have, I think this is kale. It, and this is just growing like, I didn't, we didn't plant this. I mean, there's also wild onions growing on, in our pasture here. And lo lots of clover, different kinds of grasses and bugs and worms and dirt. I mean, it's amazing to see the improvement from when we very first moved on this property. All right, so these are our 30 meat birds that we currently have right now. We, we just butchered uh, 30 last week, so these guys we're gonna butcher in about four weeks. And here on our property, we usually raise about 60 meat birds a year. And we also butcher them here in our backyard and we put them in our freezer. Now this cart I built, I feel like we needed a cart, like some kind of garden cart, some kind of homestead cart to like help us with, you know, just hauling stuff. And so we use this cart to haul up like wood chips, compost. Right now I'm using it for our feed. And so I, I use this uh, to kind of store our feed for all of our meat birds and it kind of moves with the chicken coop and it helps me uh, move around uh, and, and fill up the feed and use it for our homestead. So prior to moving to North Carolina, we sold a lot of our stuff, pretty much most of our stuff we sold in Southern California. Uh, but one of the things that we kept is was, was my tools. I knew that was one of the ways that we could possibly make an income was me making things. And this is my wood shop. It's basically a 120 square foot shed that I converted it into my wood shop. And here I make a lot of the things that we have on our website. We also have a shop in Asheville and we make things here on our homestead in this wood shop. So a quick background on our homestead here. We live on one and a half acres. We're a family of three. Uh, we came from the Los Angeles area and moved here in Western North Carolina about three years ago. I think we've always thought of, of this place as not our forever homestead. It's not our dream homestead, but I felt like it was our starter homestead. Something that we can just, it can just get us out here, start homesteading, start getting dirty, start building stuff, start creating a life that we have always dreamt about. 
but I feel like it was really important to start small. Even though one and a half acres seems like huge to us, uh, I feel like a lot of people who get into homesteading want acres and acres of land. And I feel like for us, it's important. it was important to start small. One and a half acres is plenty. And I wanted to uh, share with you guys what you could possibly do on one and a half acres. And starting small is important because I wanted to be successful at homesteading. I did not want to feel overwhelmed. And so if we started small, we had a, a better chance to be successful at it. And one of my favorite things about living on our homestead here, that no matter where we're at during the day, you know, no matter what things we have going on during the day, you can always find us in the garden at the end of the day. And in the garden is where things happen. This is where we talk about our day, talk about our future goals, and talk about the love that we have for our homestead. But I appreciate you guys watching. My name is Jason from Sow the Land. 